Welcome back to OmniFactory and let's go for a quick tour on just the upgrades that I've actually done in here. So I've moved all of our storage upstairs and into these series of crates. Only the first five are hooked up for the moment. You'll see there they are, the, the logistics pipes underneath. If we just go and look at those just for a second, uh, well, not in the actual crate, in the pipe. Oh, can I not get to it without actually removing this block? Let's just remove the block and take a look. So we've got an item sync module and a provider module. Again, the provider module we've seen before, um, that just basically lets the system request stuff from this inventory. And the item sync module is just basically like the equivalent of the basic logistics pipe, uh, this thing, but it's in a module form. Now there are multiple item sync modules. So right now the system doesn't really, or isn't really configured to send stuff to these, these crates. The only one that's configured is downstairs. That's the default route. And the item sync modules, you can decide however you want to get things stored. Uh, for example, if you had an interface to an AE2 system, you could just have um, the, the default route be there. So everything will get dumped into your AE2 system and you can uh, see, well, have visibility of your AE2 system as well. So all's good there. In my case, uh, you can then use the other types of item sync module. So item sync, there are multiple different kinds, polymorphic, mod based, or dictionary creative. <laughs> okay, so as you might imagine, mod based and uh, or dictionary uh, would be straightforward. Um, there is also polymorphic and I never remember what that's for. <laughs> One second. Ah yes, that's the module that basically checks for what's in the chest and then only routes stuff that's already in the chest to that chest. So, or any storage really. So for example, um, you could just use that for, I don't know, storage drawers or stuff like this, or indeed stuff with just wood in it. You could basically get it to get any duplicates of that wood straight back to that chest. There is also a couple of other things. Uh, there is a quick sort module that's more for this kind of thing. So that it will basically anything you put in here, it will try and extract any destination that is valid. Uh, however, uh, it doesn't look at the default route, which is this dump chest, which means that if you have things configured upstairs, the polymorphic module, for instance, it will route anything already up there to up there, leaving anything new in this chest. We're not going to worry about it just yet because the first thing we're actually going to create is just what I mentioned last episode, which is a crafting table or rather the, the equivalent of a crafting terminal, if you like. So crafting uh, table and you can see that the logistics request table is the old logistics crafting terminal. So that takes a couple of circuits and a mechanical crafter. This is slightly more complicated in that you need to just put some steel plates together to make small steel gears. And we've made these resonating redstone crystals before. They're an alloy smelter with ender shards and blocks of redstone, uh, all fairly straightforward. Two different pipes, request logistics pipe mark two and crafting logistics pipe. And then the rest is actually really straightforward. Blank scatter module this is just stuff we've made before. Gold coated circuit boards and sorry, just co coated circuit boards and gold wire. And that's made up. So I made those off camera just so that we have these available. And then we have a logistics requesting table in front of us. So we also have a basic logistics pipe. And then we've got to decide where to actually put this. Um, I sort of want to put it uh, somewhere nearby these. Um, let's just see. I think I might just move that compiler to this side. And let's see whether that, because we, I think we actually, did we put the pipes in here? Yeah, there's a basic logistics one back there. So if I just put another basic logistics one here and we have then this, right oh no <laughs> this right next to um everything else so there's the request table let's put this program encoder back or whatever it's called program compiler there we go and then we can put the request table down right there put the uh, floor back and then that should be good we just need to put the disk back in here i've got shift click it unfortunately and why don't we just look at chassis threes and unlock that while we're actually doing everything else Okay, so now we have a crafting table and an inventory that we can use for ourselves. So it could easily take the place of this request logistics pipe. We can pull stuff into this area. More importantly, I have access to my own inventory and I have access to JEI, so we should be able to make pretty much anything from here. So I just go, say, for example, uh, can we actually just click on a crafting table? Will that let me do that? That's annoying. Can I not? Oh, I can. Okay. Um, let's just shift click that in. 
Not sure why that one didn't work. Oh, it's just the decoration block. Okay. So um, select all dictionary type oak wood planks. And it has different options here that we can pull in. For example, jungle wood planks, most likely. Uh, and then press done. And then that should pull this into here. And do we have the option to pull from here? Interesting. Um, yeah, just create one. And there it goes. It gets changed. Good. So it slightly, works slightly differently to an AE2 terminal where you're just shift clicking in. In this case, you're shift, you're shift clicking in from the recipe and then just pressing this to request a number of actual items. Good. I'm happy with that so far. So we've got, I'm well, not auto crafting, but you have potentially a replacement for at least these manual crafting efforts. It's been updated to version 1.1.0 and that has some other changes in there. So in here we have the ability to now just purchase directly with Omni coins, in this case Omni nickels, and they are coming from Omni pennies. So you don't necessarily need that quest anymore. You can just do that, trade for two Omni nickels and then get some iron ore out. So we'll then use that just to make a little bit more wrought iron. And I've got some here uh, that needs to be made up into uh, into uh, what are they called again? Plates? Yes, plates. And let's get those going as well. We'll just put it down. And people keep commenting for some reason. I'm not sure if I didn't do it in earlier episodes that you can do two things at once with this. Yes, I know. <laughs> Maybe I don't demonstrate it on video enough, but I do know that that actually works fine. <laughs> so uh, that's going to be a seven there. So we're going to want uh, eight, nine, 10, 11 because we need to make another machine hole. Because next thing we're going to go for. I think this used to be called like an automatic crafting table or something like that. If you look at crafting table, it appears to have changed name. I think this is the item we actually want, the logistics crafting table. So use for auto crafting with logistics and a fuzzy crafting table. Well, or dictionary auto crafting with logistics. In this case, it's uh, again, another recipe that we've, we're, we're perfectly comfortable with. A couple of basic logistics pipes. So they, again, are the FPGAs with unrooted um, transport pipe. A primitive circuit and an LV machine hole. So we have everything we need there. So we're just gonna get a couple of basics, one, two, and then we just need the machine hole. I've already got the circuit, got that down. So we just need our plates and we should be able to just dump them in and then get a machine casing and a machine hole. And are we then ready to go for this? Uh, oh, I just need one of these first and that needs a compressed crafting table. And hence why we have the ability to make these. So we're gonna need, um, I may actually, or I've already got some, okay. Can I actually just craft them from here and request them? So if I say request um, eight more, yep. Yep, they appear here. Um, well, I requested eight, but there were already, there were already one there. So it makes, oh no, <laughs> okay. It just took a little while to get the last one. Maybe it was in a, a separate chest that was farther away. So I guess we can just use it in here. I guess uh, there shouldn't be any uh, need for us to go anywhere else. There we go. And that will convert over just fine. Then we can then use that to convert into our mechanical crafter and a mechanical crafter into logistics crafting tables, four. And we get four for every machine hull and every circuit. Okay, next step is quite an easy one. Let's just actually put a few of this stuff into this inventory. Uh, that should do it for now. Uh, we're going to go and create some crafting logistics pipes. Now we need to shift click them in and that will be perfectly fine. We should be able to order the, the redstone from our system. We just need the logistics programmer or the, the, the specific one in this case and that will do so we we'll put that in there and uh, we should be able to order let's say four of them uh i'm missing a logistics program no not it's right there basic logistics pipe they're in this inventory i'm not sure why it doesn't see them i would have thought it would ah, okay well i guess we can just put them in here and can you see them in there okay let's give that a go again uh whoops there we go. So missing two redstone and that's probably because I used all the redstone in the system. So let's just grab some from here and make sure <laughs> interesting red glow you get from redstone may end up with like a dark room sort of effect with that with blocks of redstone maybe in the future. Anyway, so let's just uh, do that. And are you capable of changing? Yes, you are. Crafting logistics pipe. 
yeah, that's very odd that it can't see anything in its own inventory because that's really what I kind of need. Um, yeah, is one of these a return? Let's hope so. Yes, it is a return. Okay. And we are missing a logistics programmer. Yes, yes, yes. And we've got three of them. And let's say a fourth one once it actually finishes. There we go. Four. Right. Now I'm going to head upstairs up to where I'm going to put some crafting tables down. And this is where it starts to take up a little bit of space. Because each one of these crafting tables is for one recipe, if I remember rightly. Yes, just one. <laughs> so you want to concentrate on your most important recipes, and we can have those here. We've got four crafting logistics pipes, and they should connect to our network once we've got that. So I just want a couple of those unrooted uh, pipes again. Let's just grab them from down downstairs. Uh, they'll be in here, no doubt, uh, somewhere. Um, let's just order them. There we go. Let's just order all five. There we go. And head upstairs and connect the network. One, two. That should change from red, hopefully. And now we're able to set up recipes. So we've got four crafting grids we can use to set up recipes. And underneath them, you'll see these and we can control what we have in here. Right now, that's not going to show an awful lot because we haven't set up a recipe. So let's set up a first recipe and see how we use them. And they've changed color now. They've actually finally synced. Here, let's just pop that away for a second. I've just put it one further down for this to connect in pipe. And in here, let's say we want our first recipe to be the LV machine holes. OK, so we've got a recipe like this and we need to put at least the tool in here. Uh, in fact, let's just take that out for a second and just go to here and press import. Now, right here, it's saying it's going to try and input eight raw time plates and a raw time wrench. That may not be too great because it's um, it's got a, a durability value. Haven't quite figured out that one out. Um, I can't remember whether it's needed to be like the fuzzy version of the crafting table. But in any case, we're not going to need to do that because here I'm going to remove that as an input. So now we've reconfigured this to say, if you input eight raw time plates, you will get an LV machine casing back out. However, in here, the recipe has still got the raw time wrench, which means all I need to do is put a raw time wrench in here and leave it in here. Now, eventually, if it gets used up, yeah, the system won't be able to craft anymore. But this just makes things work, uh, hopefully, quite well. So let's see how well this actually goes in practice. So uh, we don't need satellite. Satellite is more if you want inputs going to a different side. So if, if for example, this was sided such that it had to receive stuff in the, to the back, like for example, a furnace, um, or a, a vanilla furnace anyway, you put a satellite pipe at the, the, the back of the furnace, and then you would tell this thing, hey, it needs to route um, fuel back there, or whatever you actually wanted to do. Not so sure about the priority and how that actually applies. Maybe that's more to do if you've got the same recipe in multiple tables, but I don't think we're going to actually need that, at least not in our playthrough. So let's just pop downstairs and let's see whether this thing can request things properly now. So I'm just going to pop the uh, raw time plates into my dump chest. And let's see in here if we've got the machine hole. So machine hole. You'll see it says zero, which is a good sign. And if we just go to things we can craft, you'll see there is only that right now. Supply, both, craft. So if we want a LV machine casing, click on it, press request, request successful, and we should get one, hopefully. It should route the stuff down from down here, back up to the crafting table, and from the crafting table, back down here. I would hope. <laughs> we may have to wait for a little while. Machine, oh, no, wait, pop into my inventory. There we go. So the machine casing, and that's slower than you might expect from something like AE2 crafting, but it was routing stuff from all the way down here, all the way up to the, the stuff up there, crafting it, bringing it back all the way back down to this pipe. Now, that's one of the other reasons why I've put the um, storage system right next to where we put the crafting tables, because if it needs to get anything from any of these things, for example, any of this stuff, any of this stuff, it can just pull it from those, hopefully, <laughs> I would have thought so anyway, across here 
and then back down to wherever I requested it. Now, right now, that, that request point is down in the basement. But uh, again, once we have more ender pearls available, we may be able to make that remote orderer and the ender chest option of having a remote orderer pipe connected to an ender chest. And then I'll be able to craft stuff from anywhere because I could order anything from here, which includes the also crafting stuff. It'll arrive into the ender chest, which I can see with the ender pouch. So a nice remote craftable thing. It's just not going to be terribly fast by comparison to AE2, but it's certainly a lot faster than running around. That much is for certain. So we probably won't be needing, I assume, LV machine casings, LV machine holes for, you know, a long time. But uh, we have the ability to auto craft at least the machine casings for now. So right now, what you all you really have to do is decide which of your recipes you find most important, because for every four of these for recipes, you're going to have to do a whole bunch more crafting. So uh, the logistics crafting table is logistics crafting table uh, is um, going to be one circuit every time and a machine hull every time. So that's kind of useful. And then this mechanical crafter, and that takes a little bit more effort as well, because you've got to get to steel. And right now, what we don't have is auto crafting for machines. We have auto crafting for crafting tables, but in the sort of um, A2 world of auto crafting, the machine crafting is more um, using interfaces. So you put your pattern in the interface, attach the interface to the machine, and then it knows it needs to insert stuff and pull stuff, well, it can't pull stuff back out, but your machine can eject stuff back into it. Uh, and depending on the machine, it depends whether it can also eject or whether you have to put like some sort of separate piping system that will pull only the item back out and back into the interface. Uh, either way, we'll get to that once we get to AE2. But uh, that's a brief overview of logistics auto crafting, at least for the regular, you know, table kind of auto crafting kind of crafting using crafting tables that you might want to do. So for example, if we just dig for here a second, uh, I do actually need to maybe make a sort of shovel of some kind at some point. However, let's for now just dig it this way and uh, we should have a, uh, yeah, we should have a block here we can grab. There we go. And let's just place this stuff here. So let's just bring some unrooted pipe and we need to just dig this one out. And underneath this one, we're not going to put unrooted pipe or basic. We're going to use this one, supplier logistics pipe. So that can go down there. And then we can put this back down. Now, what that should allow us to do once I go and edit it is supply this work table with stuff. The stuff we can choose, but you know, stuff all the same. And in this case, Let's say, for example, we wanted to, oops, yeah, yeah we're not going to go down there. We wanted to keep this supplied uh, with stock. So let's just say, um, well, book 50 is perhaps a little bit much. Let's just say we want to keep this supplied with raw iron. That will then go and pull apart from provider modules attached to this, this block. So it's not going to try and pull from itself is what it's saying. It will pull from any available source to keep whatever you have here supplied. So, for example, let's uh, say, for example, we have our circuit uh, crafting table upstairs, which I need to move down here or something, or even up to the top. And so we have that. Uh, we can have it so keep everything supplied with everything that this table needs for all of its recipes. So we can have keep 50 of every single item in there. You'll see right now it's not getting anything. That's because there isn't any of this uh, wrought iron ingot anywhere in the system. But if I put some in, uh, there it goes. It's starting to pull from that. And imagine it will pull more once it's realized. Uh, has it moved its stuff in there? It has. So it's moved at least one. Is it not pulling anymore? Hmm. I do need to look at what each of these, these, uh, these, whoops, um, these settings are. I never remember what bulk 50, bulk 100. Let's just try infinite for a second. And that should pull them all. Yep, there it goes. So there we go, and they all arrive. So you can basically keep all of your tables stocked with exactly what you want using the system. Yeah, now that I read it, I do remember exactly what this is for. Basically, down here, you can specify the number of items. So let's say we wanted to keep this system in with, let's say, four. OK, and we only ever wanted four. If we are partial, whenever it drops below four, it will start to try and restock. 
Okay, so if we put, uh, let's just make a couple more just to demonstrate that. So we've got six. So if this is configured for four, did I configure it for four? Yes, then it will keep four stocked. So if I put six in here, that should immediately request four of them. There they come, and in it goes. We've got four. However, if I then take one of those out, it should start requesting what it needs from the system. I would have thought, yep, there it goes. And we're back to four again. Cool. And that's pretty much what you probably want most of the time, I would have thought. However, the other modes are there so that you can just change that behavior a little bit. So let's say, for example, full. That's only going to, I think, request once you drop to zero. So basically, it will request them all at once, once it finishes. Bulk 50 and bulk 100 are basically modes that um, when it drops, uh, let's say, for example, you added 50, uh, not 50, let's just choose 100. Let's say I configured 100 items in here. When you hit 50% of them, then it would request stuff. And that's, that's where you get bit bulk 50 and bulk 100. And then infinite is basically, you know, fill the entire inventory. So you almost never want that. In this case, something like stocked for ingots would do perfectly fine if that was what I wanted in this uh, particular case. I don't. So I'm just going to grab that back. However, for your case, you may want different things. Uh, so that is the other mode for crafting find how good Greg Tech is or how bad Greg Tech is. Uh, if we just grab some unrooted cable here, uh, pipe even, put a basic logistics pipe down. Remember, always put it down whenever you've got a junction, i.e. more than two pipes going through a block space. Uh, you want to have a basic pipe so that routing can work correctly. Otherwise, you'll have a bit of a bad time. And that goes behind our machines and up top and above. Now, there is a few different things you can do uh, with Greg Tech and wrenches as far as inputs and outputs are concerned. For now, what I'd kind of like to do is just break this, I think. I'm just going to break it and replace it. And I'm going to leave this as the default mode. OK, so no inputs, no outputs. And on top, I'm going to put a basic, oh, not basic, sorry, a crafting logistics pipe. OK, now we have an ability to craft stuff. Remember, we have um, this where we can specify inputs. Now, we could import before, but we can't do that because it's a, um, well, it's a machine. It's not a crafting table. So we can't just import the recipe. Instead, we've got to give it the recipe, whatever it needs. So in this case, uh, let's say, say we want the recipe for steel. OK, steel ingots. And steel ingots in an alloy smelter is one wrought iron ingot and one coal dust. I happen to have both of those in my inventory. Planned a little bit ahead. So we're going to say in here, we want both of those inputs, one of those, one of these. And what do we get back out of it? Well, we need to put these in and we should get a, uh, a steel ingot back out. So let's wait for that to finish. While it's actually going, one thing I did want to ask is, do you guys know of any way of getting basically more recipes out of a single block space than this crafting logistics pipe? If there is, let me know in the comments. More than happy to hear it. Anything that where I get more ability to put denser recipes in a smaller block space is good. For example, using those those uh, work tables will work perfectly well, um, which will be more compact than each of these. So all you need to do with those, of course, is to use those supplier pipes and then you can compact things that way. Anyone know of any other ways? Do let me know. All right. Now, where was I? In here, then, we need to put, specify what the output is. And that should be this setup. For example, we should now be able to request steel. So if I just change this to craft, you'll see it can actually supply steel, assuming it has all the ingredients. So let's just put those two things in there and we can request it. Now, if Greg Tech is good, this is going to try and pull the output back out of the machine. It doesn't need to be ejected into the pipe system. It will try and pull. If Reg Tech isn't good, then it may not let that item be pulled back out. Hopefully it will. Let's give it a go. And uh, that just makes things easier for me. So let's just go for steel ingot. And I'm going to request one. The request is successful. So you should see that get moved in. There it goes. And it's going to start crafting steel. I love this already.
<laughs> oh boy, wait for the auto crafting. This is so great when you get to this point of the mod pack. Um, yeah, and there we go. And did you pull back out? It looks like you did. So, and there we go. We got steel. So auto crafting steel whenever we want, which of course makes it better for making tools and of all kinds. So yeah, we can put that wherever we want. Um, another way is of course furnaces. But remember that every time you use one of these, it takes one block space. So that's where I sort of do want the ability to have more. We can get around crafting table block space issues with work tables. They've got nine recipes and you just keep everything supplied and you just walk up and grab whatever you want. These, well, that pretty much means one machine per recipe because these don't seem to have. And do they have actually a secondary crafting logistics pack? Crafting logistics. No, there isn't a multiple, um, there isn't multiple tiers of it. So it's not like there is a, yeah, crafts one item at a time. I would like a Mark II version, please. That'd be, that'd be very nice. Crafting module, crafting module. Uh, are you going to be exactly the same? Is there any version two? Doesn't look like it at all. Hmm. Okay, so maybe you could craft a chassis with multiple of them in. That might, you know, multiple of these crafting modules. Not sure. Let me know in the comments. I may, may well have to try that between the episodes. Regardless, it's uh, not as important for alloy smelter in that I can just change the recipe. But um, for things like furnaces, if I can only make one recipe per furnace, I'm going to be making lots of furnaces for various things. In this case, mostly it's stuff like um, uh, wrought iron. So that, that will be the most obvious recipe for this particular furnace. And then I guess you could put them on you know, multiple sides of the uh, of the the machine, if it was available. Um, there is another side available at the back there. There isn't one at the bottom and the front I kind of want. So there's only really the back unless you space these out with gaps either side. And then you could perhaps put multiple of these pipes around either side of it. But um, yeah, furnaces are, tend to be sided if it's anything like uh, vanilla anyway. So we may not be able to do that in the case of a furnace. We may have to use satellites, but I'll figure that out between the episodes. Regardless, that's pretty much covering all the auto crafting stuff I want to cover in this episode. For 40 minutes, like normal, uh, or indeed 20 if I'm a bit rushed. But this episode, I think we've got quite a little bit explained and done. Hopefully all the pipes are now pretty obvious to you. Uh, what's, are there any we haven't really covered? So basic, we know that's for junctions. Request logistics pipes, you request stuff and it comes out to you. Uh, provider, that's so it can pull stuff from that inventory. So chests. Um, or indeed tables. You could attach a provider to a table if you wanted to. Uh, the, you know, the crafting table. Crafting logistics pipes, we know you attach that to machines or to, uh, we know, work tables. Satellite, that's for putting inputs into different sides than the one the crafting pipe is connected to. Supplier, that's the one where it supplies your tables with enough of ingredients. And you could do that for machines as well. Um, but, uh, for example, let's say you wanted always to have a stock of... 64 um, wrought iron. You would set up a supply logistics to supply a furnace with something like um, 64 iron, and it would process them all. And of course, once it ran out, then it would request another 64. But if the output was full, then it would stop. It would never, you know, eventually it couldn't process anymore, so it couldn't request any more iron. So you could then put something like a provider onto the output, Oh, or any side, I suppose, on a furnace, maybe. And uh, basically be, be able to pull the wrought iron back out of it. But then that's that furnace closed off for other purposes. So maybe we'll think of other ways of doing it later. Re request logistics pipe mark two. So that's just a faster version. Uh, I think the original version is like one every few seconds. Uh, and then remote orderer. So we haven't made the remote orderer yet because I was waiting for the ender chest. So maybe we'll do that next episode if I get enough materials in to do it. And then we'll be able to um, basically use the remote orderer itself. That's this little, excuse me one second, uh, this little item. And remember, however, that when you open it, depending on how far you are away from uh, where you've linked it to, i.e. the pipe, um, will use more power. Cross dimension, it'll use a lot more power. So yeah, it's not based on the number of items you requested. So it's when you open it. So if you're going to open it, Request all the items at once rather than closing it and opening it again.
Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this episode. It's been a bit of a fair bit of explaining, but hopefully you'll all be able to follow along before diving straight into A2. And next episode, probably other than maybe that remote orderer, we'll get back into the more omnifactory specific stuff. Uh, some people did put comments last episode. I know I haven't addressed them this episode. I'll address them next episode about ways to, to basically get this going without necessarily requiring medium voltage and various other stuff that you can make phenol and stuff like that directly out here. But we'll address that next episode. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you have, feel free to subscribe and share the episode with other people, but click on the bell if you want notifications for future episodes. More importantly than all that, leave that comments for other people playing through and maybe share stories of what you've been up to in your Omnifactory playthrough. Otherwise, as always, guys, thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.